Hey there, this is Matt. The last few videos I've done have all been about different UIs and different databases, and not so much about new versions of Olama. There was a time I was doing a video every time a new release came out, but it's been a while since I've done that. I think the reason is, well, I'm sure all the releases have been important, but for me, they were all a little bit meh. I'm sure a lot of folks were really excited by the AMD release, but it didn't affect me. And I didn't have a way of testing it since I couldn't find any cloud providers that use AMD cards. But 0.1.33 just came out and wow, this one is pretty exciting. I think it's the first release that is a major departure from one of the key ideas we had when we started working on Olama. You see, Olama was designed from the very beginning to be a tool to run artificial intelligence models locally on your own machine. For all of us in the original team, that meant on our Apple Silicon laptops. Although running it on a server was always a long-term goal, it wasn't something that was being focused on immediately. And so that meant a lot of those server features were intentionally not being worked on. Some examples include authentication and authorization, better queuing of requests, and being able to answer more than one question at a time. Well, that last item is no longer something that's not supported. In version 0.1.33, the Olama team has introduced two new environment variables that allow the tool to support concurrency features. They include Olama num parallel and Olama max loaded models. These are amazing. Olama num parallel defines how many requests can be processed at the same time for the same model. One of the interesting things about this is that if you set num parallel to say three and you have three requests come in at the exact same time, it won't take three times as long to process all the requests. And the requests don't have an eval rate of one third the number of tokens per second. Max loaded models is interesting because the number you specify determines how many models can be attempted to be loaded at the same time. If you don't have the memory, it still won't load the models. But if you do, you could have two, three, or more models loaded and working at the same time. For instance, you have a code completion model with 20 in VS Code, and at the same time, you're asking Llama 3 for advice about how to architect something in your code. So let's take a look at how this works. Now, I'm using a tool called Zellage, which is a terminal multiplexer. Think Tmux, but with shortcuts that make sense and a hell of a lot easier to use. I created a layout that has three equal panes. I've not set any environment variables yet. So let's run Olama run phi three. You can see it's loading up the model in the three panes. Now, why is the sky blue in one pane? What is a black hole in another? And how do I make concrete in the third? And the answer is showing up in each pane after the previous one is finished. So I'll exit out completely and use launch CTL to set the environment variable Olama num parallel to be three and restart the Olama server. Now I'll load up each pane again and ask that question. And look at that. They are all responding at the same time. We aren't loading the model three times, but we will need a bit more memory to handle the additional context. Now let's try another option. I don't have Olama max loaded models set to anything, but I'll try Phi in one pane, Llama 3 in another, then Mistral in the other. Ask the same question in all of them and press enter. We can see one answer, and then the next, and then the next. Try slash so model file, and we can ensure that they are really are three different models. Okay, now exit, set env, Olama max loaded models to three, restart the Olama server and open our Zellage session. I'll load three different models, then sync the paints. And now, why is the sky blue? And all three are answering at the exact same time. Again, running slash show model file confirms again that we're using three different models. So this is pretty incredible. In the release notes, the team mentions that this is experimental. 
it's not fully fleshed out. And soon after working with it, you can see some of the issues. There is no prioritization. I can't say respond with this model super fast, but any question to that other model should be slower. I can't say use up to 80% of my VRAM, but rather only say load up X number of models. If I want to ensure I always have some amount of VRAM available, I don't really have an option. And of course I have no orchestration here. This is all on one machine and there's no way yet to have many, many machines working together. But nonetheless, this is an exciting feature that is gonna change how a lot of folks use Olama. There are a few other features in this release. It looks like they fixed some issues where the model wouldn't terminate, causing the API to hang. There was another set of issues that was fixed around memory errors on Apple Silicon Macs. And then there was a series of memory errors when running Mixtral architecture models. There are a few new models as well that are supported, but they're not really part of the release. They just happen to come out between the last release and, and this one. So that includes Llama 3, Phi 3 Mini, Moondream, Llama 3 Gradient 1048K, which is a 1 million token context window, uh, Dolphin Llama 3, Quen 110B, and Llama 3 Gradient, which is another fine-tuned Llama 3 that also supports a context window of about 1 million tokens. So that's what's new. I think this is a really, really exciting release, and I can't wait to see what people do with it. And I look forward to new features around concurrency coming out in the next few releases. I do think that something's going to probably have to change around environment variables. It's getting to the point where there's quite a few environment variables that you might need to set, and maybe a config file is a better option. I tried pushing that as the configuration option back at the beginning, but I lost that battle, and I'm not really part of the team anymore, so I can't really fight for it either. Did you know that I have an email newsletter? Well, I just sent out the first of the emails just a few days ago, and I, that was pretty exciting. I get to share some of the things that I'm working on, some of the ideas I have, and, and more. So I'll be sending out more of those on that email subscription. Uh, you can find out more at technovangelist.com slash newsletter. I also have a Patreon. If you're interested in that kind of thing, you can find that at patreon.com slash technovangelist. Thanks so much for being here. Goodbye.